Okay, in this tutorial, I'm going to outline the main information you need to know in regards to what you're going to be writing and any particular rules that relate to uh, completing a, a really high level advanced hire project. Um, I will outline what you're going to be marked on, things you need to consider um, when uh, choosing your project, and finally, what the structure of your project is going to be. So let's get started and have a little think about the actual um, importance of this piece of work. Your project accounts for 40% of all of the marks. And the advanced high course is broken into three parts. Uh, the project, which you're looking at right now. The essay, which is worth just under 30%. And those two pieces together are combined uh, to make up what's known as the folio. And you know, you'll be working on them in class across the year and they are handed in um, early May and you'll be given a due date for both pieces of work both the project and the essay uh, by your classroom teachers at a later point during the course. The final part of an advanced side course is of course the exam which assesses all the different skills and techniques uh, that you will have learned both through your field trip um, that you will complete a uh, range of field trips I should say as well as uh, classroom lessons where you're taught different parts of the course. So those three think parts make up the uh, advanced hire course, but of course the project uh, at 40% is the most important as it carries the most overall marks. Now let's have a little look at the most important rule. The most important rule is that your project should be no more than 3000 words in length. Now the actual word length does not include um, a range of things which you can see outlined here. And uh, you'll be given a jotter in which to uh, take all notes for the advanced hour project. And that's something worthwhile outlining um, straight away. What is the word limit? Now, you are allowed to go 10% over this 3,000 word limit. So effectively, if you go up to 3,300, you won't be penalized. However, if you go beyond that word length, you will be given a 10% penalty on the marks that you are awarded. In terms of marks, the project is worth 60 in total. And as already told, uh, stated, that comes as 40% of the marks. Now, let's have a little thing. Uh, that I should say before we're looking at the things to consider, there isn't any other major uh, rule in regards to this other than make, making the deadline, um, which will normally falls uh, at the beginning of May. Although, as I go through the tutorial, uh, we never know at the start of an academic session when the actual deadline for the essay and the project will be, but that's historically always been early May. What should you consider? The most important thing to bear in mind, you can read through this, uh, pause the video in a second and read through this for your own leisure, is that prior to actually starting researching and reading up and actually going out into the field and gathering data, you will have a at least one meeting, one-to-one -one meeting with your classroom teacher, um, which is likely to be myself, where we will discuss um, both, is your topic difficult and challenging enough? And that's from a perspective of being able to access the grades, which the type of grade that you would be aiming for, which ideally will be an A. Is it viable project? Could it be achieved? And also, um, can you actually gather enough data for it? Is it realistic in the time frame in which we'll be completing this? And all of those things will be discussed in that meeting. You are awarded uh, credit for demanding topics. So going for something that's a bit more challenging um, might be uh, advisable, especially if you are aiming for a very high mark. Now it does say here, and this is an important point to bear in mind, you have your own level of experience and expectations. Now the expectation is not more than likely going to be an A grade um, and that's a, a certainly a valid expectation to have at the start of the course but you've also got your own particular unique set of experiences about going out and gathering information and working independently um, and uh, of course this is what this whole project requires is independent work. Now if you are for example a very shy person who finds it very difficult to for example uh, walk up to a complete stranger in the street and complete a survey, let's say you would find that extremely difficult, then it's very uh, inadvisable to do a project that requires that type of field work. 
So do consider what your own experience and what your expectations are and what you are capable of yourself prior to finalizing a project. Okay, what are you going to be marked on? Well, in future tutorials, um, I'll be going through each of these seven points uh, and these form the main structure of writing the project. And there are marks available for each of these seven different component skill areas. The first one, for example, uh, is will be a, is worth four marks. And those four marks are mainly targeted in the actual chapter titled Introduction. I'll talk more about that in a second. You will be expected to do extensive background reading, not to the same level as for your essay, but there should be lots of references to other people's work, people who have uh, conducted studies or research in the same area which you are completing your advanced higher project in. This background research, by the way, um, is always used uh, in your analysis of your results as well as coming up with final conclusions. So if, you, if it's not good in the first place um, when you're doing your background research, it's going to be very difficult to make good analysis and effective and impactful conclusions. The data you gather can be primary or secondary. Primary data is data you yourself gather by going out and conducting the field work yourself. And secondary data is data which you gather primarily off the internet. Um, which other people have gathered. It will be highly recommended that most of your data comes from primary sources, although there are certainly plenty of different projects where it's possible and likely you will end up using secondary data. So for example, the census, a population-based data, uh, it'd be more likely you'd want to use secondary data if you were doing a study that required that type of data. Okay. What I would now do is just read through the rest of this page at your own speed. Just take it in and make any notes that you feel are important to you to, that you want to refer back to as you complete your project. Let's have a little look at the, the final structure. Now, a project is best suited to being written in chapters. and I will be structuring it with you as we go through it in chapters. And your deadlines will surround completing these different chapters. Now, when you are given a deadline for a chapter, you will also be given um, a lesson where we discuss what the requirements are. You'll have a, a video tutorial, just like the one you're listening to, that focuses on that, as well as lots of other students' examples. And as you work towards a deadline for writing a chapter, it's likely, certainly for some of the chapters, that you're going to want to have a meeting with myself uh, in the classroom to discuss uh, certain aspects of what you're doing and get advice. That must always be done, obviously, prior to uh, the deadline, and it should well in advance to prior to the deadline, and it should be agreed with at a time that suits both yourself and the teacher who's you're having the meeting with. Now, in this first chapter, the introduction, I said a, a second ago that you'd be targeting um, four marks worth, and those four marks will come through establishing a strong central aim, and that is so important. The entire project hangs on the aim. So agreeing the aim with your teacher will be critical and it should be well worded because it outlines what you are trying to achieve. You must also explain to the reader why this type of geographical investigation is so important. And finally, you should be outlining what the actual study is going to be on, where it's going to be completed. So that would be a location, for example, and the data that is required in order to complete the study. And a well-written piece of work covering these three areas should allow you to target those four marks effectively. Now, there is a tutorial for each one of these, so I'm not going to go in too much detail, but I would spend some time noting down the structure in your Jota, um, outlining some key points for things that you want to remember. So, for example, your project will be broken down into three research questions, three areas that all look at um, are focused on helping you achieve the aim. That then allows you to organize it much more effectively. So your background research also will be focused around background research on each of the three research questions. So as you can see here, for each research question, what have other researchers discovered? And therefore, what would you expect to find? Your method is outlined about the where you go to gather your data different sampling strategies you use to select your sites and to gather your data uh, in a fair and balanced way that ensures you get unbiased data, um, maps that locate where you actually acquired your data, and then a detailed explanation, and most importantly, justification 
for why you use those techniques to actually gather the data. So think about a field trip you've done in the job department in the past and what techniques, what equipment, what methods did you use to actually gather the data in the field? And that needs a very clear explanation. The findings is by far the most marks available in the project. And uh, it involves you uh, presenting your data using a range of different graphs, maps, tables, statistics, photographs, and, and, and other things that you can use to actually present your marks. And that's worth 10 marks out of the 60. And then your analysis of that data. So that's where you outline what the data shows, explain why it shows that, and then link it to the background research, which is what I've set down here. And that's worth 12 marks. So the findings, obviously it's findings for each of the three research questions, are worth 22 of the 60. So more than a third of your marks come from this chapter. And it's the, the chapter that takes the most, to, the longest to write. And then of course, you've got a conclusion, which wraps up your research. It's worth eight marks. And an evaluation, which is also worth eight marks. And you can see the main points written there. Uh, and towards the end of the project, you will be given, as well as at the start of the project, an outline of referencing text, referencing things that you have read on the internet and how to reference. Um, and in the creation of a bibliography. Right, okay, so that's the tutorial number one. Um, it's You've got this document available uh, as well as this video to listen back to as many times as you want if you're looking for more guidance on how to complete an advanced hire project. Refer back to this document. And in the next tutorial, we will, I will offer you some advice on the types of projects and project focuses that you might be interested in um, studying as well as how you can then use them to come up with a particular um, aim and set of research questions.